Alright guys, how's it going? I just want to show you a little video on how to find... That's pretty nice. How to find uh, the distance between stars in a system or the, dis the distance between planets and stars or, or you know, orbitals and the star. Uh, I meant to do a proper video on this, but this is going to have to do it, yeah? I'm going to make it nice and simple, so... First thing you do, you see, I've just jumped into this system here, right? And what I'm going to do is jump back to my starter system, which was LHS 3447. Drive right, and the reason I came out of it and I want to jump back will become apparent pretty, pretty soon. I'm taking a bit of heat damage. I'm not going to worry about that. Right, now this system is a pretty curious system, right? Because you don't jump in at the main star. Right? Now, I'm just going to get away from it a little bit because I'm burning up here. Uh, just to show you what I mean. Right. Now, if I go into my system map, you see it's a, it's a binary system. When you look at it though, you can sort of tell that it's, there's something not quite right about it. It's a little bit different, right? It looks like the, the bottom star is actually larger than the top star. And the reason it looks like that is because the bottom star is actually, you know, it's a bigger star. Uh, However, the system is named after the main star, LHS 3447, right? Now, if you look at the uh, solar mass, you've got half a solar mass, 0 0.5195, and a solar radius of 0.68, yeah? And the second star is 0.66 solar masses and 0.76 solar radius, yeah? So, this is, this Gliese 748.2b is the biggest star in the system. The reason it's like this is probably for historical reasons. Uh, they, they probably didn't realise it was a binary up until, you know, relatively recently or something like that, you know, or they, they just basically thought that it was a, a single star system. They didn't realise it was a dual star system. It would have been something like that, yeah? But as it happens, you know, this is an actual system or at least these two stars are real stars and... Uh, they thought that this was the main star, but it turned out that this this one is the, the largest star. Right. Now, what is really important here is the orbital period, right? You can see it's got an orbital period of 847, so 850,000 days. That sounds like an awful lot. Well, obviously, it is an awful lot in, in human terms, yeah? But that's basically the, the time that these two stars orbit each other. But it's not actually that long. I mean, it, it's long, but you will find way, way longer than that out there. Right? And the thing is, right, now I've come in at this, this star here, this Gliese 748. I'll just get back to the, the main... Uh, yeah. Back to the game and, and you can see it, yeah? Now, again, if I go to the, the system map, there is only one station here, and it's way, I mean, loss in orbital, orbiting a, a class 3 gas giant, a class 1 gas giant, yeah? When you actually start off in this system, you start off in this, uh, Trevithic Dock, is it? Here, here is where you start, this Trevithic Dock, yeah? So you're basically starting, it's almost like in a, in a totally different system because you, you have to travel from this star all the way there back uh, when, when you do a mission because this is this is where you come in, yeah? You come in at this Gliese 748.2b and then you have to travel all the way back to LHS um, 3447 just to get to, uh, you know, this dock or, or, or this dock, right? That's how you know what the distance is. 847,000 days. In game, that probably means about 5, 10 minutes. Now, 
I've showed you this before, right? But so long as you've got a system targeted, or sorry, a star targeted, then if you follow its orbit line, you will eventually come to uh, the other star, the second star. Where is it? This one's close enough. I think it must be right behind it. I'm just going to stop. It's a pretty large system, as you can appreciate, yeah? Right, so there's, there's the, the, the first star. Right, so we over there, right? So it is on the plane. You can see that it's on the plane, right? So I want to get to that. Oh, no, wait, I picked the wrong thing. It's, I was right. It's right in front of it. was right behind the star, right? As you can see, there you go, yeah? Now, that's clearly something that looks like a star that's on the same plane as uh, as the star that I've got highlighted, yeah? It's 110,000 light seconds away. Obviously, as you speed up, you know, it, 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 the time comes down a bit. But this is going to take 5-10 minutes to get there. Maybe even longer, just because of the sheer distance involved. See, it's two hours, but it is coming down pretty rapidly. Now, there's an awful lot of um, orbitals over here. Like I said, this is where you start. You start at that terrific dock. <laughs> I started here in this game. I went up, I flew out to another system. And when I came back, I realised I had a 110,000 light seconds trip. And I decided that was it, I'm not coming back to this station. But this is basically how you know how far away uh, the actual station is from the star. Yeah? Because the, the first planet, 4.6 days orbital period, that's going to be really close to the star, right? Planet 2... 10.1, very, very close. 23.7 days. But you think about this, this is all within the orbital period of Mercury in the solar system, right? Um, I've got notes here somewhere. Now, I can't quite find them, but if I could find them, then I've got notes in, in how, you know, how like, uh, the orbital periods of, of like the planets in our solar system go. Basically speaking, though, Let's see, uh, 142 days. This is the orbit of Venus, right? This LHS 3447 is within the orbit of Venus in the solar system. So the, all these five planets are within the orbit of, of Venus. So they're very close to the to the main star. What's this one? 310 days. We're getting close to Earth now. 365 days is a year, obviously, yeah? So 310 days. This is something that's pretty, pretty much like the same kind of orbit as Earth around the sun. And here we've got 1,500 days. We're getting more towards um, Mars type of thing. 5,000, no, sorry, 1,500 days is quite a bit less than Mars, I think. Yeah, a bit less than Mars. And uh, 5,000 days, even that, that's that's like well within the the, uh, the orbit of Jupiter. The reason for this, I think, is because smaller stars, like these Class K stars, Class M stars, they generally have systems that are a bit closer in. That's what the, that's how the theory goes, at least. Now I could blather away like that there, no problem, because I knew I was, you know, still minutes and minutes away from my actual target. Right, so I found my notes on the uh, the planets and their days and their years, uh, their orbital periods. I'll write them down in, in, in Sony Vegas as well uh, while I'm talking through this, but... Mercury, 88 days. Venus is 225 days. Um, if you look at it in terms of... Now let's take one that's far away. This is the furthest away from its companion star, right? And it's got an orbital period of 14,388.5 days, right? But the orbital, that's about the same as Saturn, right? So this is about, 
as far away from uh, the sun as Saturn is. So it's not going to take long to get there in reality, so long as you start here, yeah, at this star. But if you start at this star, then you've got to come all the way to this star and then get all the way here. So, I mean, this is important, right? When you get jump into a binary system, you see an orbital period, as long as it's under a million days, then you can sort of think, okay, this is going to take 10 minutes tops. It's when you start seeing things like 30, 40, 100, 500 million days. Yeah, just don't even bother going there. It's going to take minutes or hours to get there, right? For example, right, Pluto is 90,500 days, right? So this is about 10 times the, diff uh, the distance between uh, the Sun and Pluto. But obviously you speed up a lot while you're traveling there, yeah? So that, that's why it's only taking about these 10 minutes or so. So here we are, we're down to the last couple of minutes. I'm not sure what, I mean, Alpha Centauri and Hutton Station, I reckon, is, is a very long one. Apparently, it's something like 0 0.22 light years. Uh, I'm not, I've never been to Alpha Centauri, or, or I have been, but I didn't actually check it out. So, uh, I reckon it takes about two hours or so just to fly to that station because of the sheer distance between the stars. Uh, if you, you need to get to the star, you need to get to Proxima Centauri first, yeah? Look at the system map once you get there, and when you click on it, you will get an orbital period, and it will be massive. It will be millions upon millions of days, yeah. And that's that's how you know that it takes so long to get there. Uh, this is only good when you know, like, you, you've got to know what the orbital period of the star is, yeah. Uh, if you don't know what the orbital period of the star is, then you don't you, you don't know how long it's going to take. But that is the only information you need. Orbital period, number of days, you can work that out in years, yeah? Just divide that number by 365, you can work out the orbital period in years. It does tend to slow down. This is not perfect as well. I've noticed as you get closer, uh, it slows down. So, in reality, I'm probably about another five minutes away from it, uh, even though it only says a minute, like, uh, below the light second counter. So this is certainly not perfect uh, at this stage of the game, at least. The important thing is, though, y you can see what I mean, right? The orbital period, uh, this long orbital period, has made you know this journey made this journey a ten, maybe fifteen minute journey. Uh, anything that is over this is going to be longer. Anything that's that's below it is going to you know take take much less time. I'm just going to cruise in though. Might as well now after I've gone all this distance, yeah. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover. Uh, the, the furthest planet, uh, uh, yeah, 5,418 days. That, as I said, that is absolutely nothing. That's that's the orbit of Jupiter, yeah. This this one here is the orbit of, orbit of Jupiter around the sun. Uh, this one here would be 1,500 days. Yeah. Maybe twice the orbit of Mars, maybe. So this is sort of like the asteroid belt type of range. Like I said before, this one's about Earth range around the Sun. It's really interesting to know this stuff. It really, you know, it, if you've got this stuff in your head, it, you really start to appreciate the, the, you know, the engine behind the game. It, it really is something else. And it does mean something, yeah? It's not just numbers. And hopefully... Like, uh, there's a lot more, you know, being added. As the game develops, more of this stuff gets added. You get semi-major axis and orbital eccentricity and stuff like that. Uh, and the argument of periapsis. Um, I'm not sure exactly how important all this stuff is, but for sure the orbital period lets you know how far away a planet and therefore a station is from its main star, and it lets you know how far away two stars are from each other. Within reason, yeah? You're always going to get a, a, a decent guess at how far you're going to have to travel. Somebody else can work that one out. I was going to do it, but th this vid is going to have to do. So here we come. 
back to the home system. I really do recommend if you start an LHS 3447, do not take any uh, missions, just fly somewhere else because every time you come back you're going to have to do this trip because you you end up at the the, the most massive star and yet all all the good uh, all the good orbitals and all the good planets. This is where they all are. Right, I hope that was informative. Uh, I just decided to do this one off the cuff after reading uh, a post on the forum. So, I think it was Sandman or somebody. So shout out to him and uh, thanks for watching.